Okay, in part two of this uh, adaptive bloom video, I'm going to show you how this shader works. Because if you're anything like me, you're interested in this stuff and in, in, in knowing exactly how it works. And plus, if you know how it works, you're going to be able to make the most of it in your games. So I'm going to use Photoshop to show you exactly how this shader works. We're going to take a trip down the shader pipeline, and I'm going to show you what the shader does each step of the way visually using Photoshop because really that's all a, a full screen shader is. It's, it's applying effects to the full screen image and then uh, redisplaying it as a, a final result. It, it, but instead of using you know Photoshop that has like a graphical user interface, you're doing all the uh, operations in the shader using math on colors. So what we have here, first in Photoshop, here's just a picture of, let's say this is a, a, a screen in your game. It's just a cube map of some mountains and a sky. This is the starting image that the uh, shader sees. The first thing it's going to do, it's going to shrink this image down into a super small two pixel by two pixel image like we see here. Uh, this is a, a two by two image of this uh, starting result and what this does, it's going to uh, sample each of these four corners. I'm purposely using a type of sampling called point sampling that keeps the image pixelated because that's what I want. I want to sample each of these four uh, corners of the uh, screen and it's going to average it into a final result. Uh, first it's going to grayscale it to remove all the colors then average these four pixels to get a final brightness and this represents your screen's overall brightness. This is the key to how the shader works. Um, it analyzes the brightness every frame to produce uh, uh, average brightness. And what this basically does is controls the amount of bloom that's going to be applied later on. So the brighter this um, average brightness is, it's going to tell the shader to lower the amount of bloom so it doesn't blow everything out. And the darker it is, it's going to say, hey, we're probably in a really dark room, we need to raise the bloom up. So that's the key to how this shader works. In in order to avoid, you know, popping in, you know, bloom jumping up and down, I blend this result over the previous 60 frames so you get a nice smooth adaptation, you know, so the bloom isn't jumping around. So the next thing that's going to happen in the shader, it's going to take the original s screen image again and it's going to perform this thresholding operation where it's going to remove all the darker colors only keeping the brightest parts of the image. You can see the suns here, the reflection on the water, and part of the horizon over the clouds. Everything else is removed. So you don't get the whole screen getting bloomed out, only the brightest parts. So that's the next thing that happens in the shader. Then once we have this thresholded image, we're going to blur it, like here. So we're going from this to this. This blurring step is what provides the bloom, that glow around the object. So then once we have this uh, bloom image, it's time to composite this over our original screen, uh, screen image, and that's what we have here. So let me just toggle this off. Here's without the bloom, and here's with the bloom. You can see around like the corners of the brightest parts of the image and the sun, you get this nice glowing effect without it blurring out the entire screen. So that's how the shader works, really interesting. So let me go over to Dark Shader here, and I've got a few controls I, I built into this. Not a whole lot, because I, I spent a lot of time tweaking this, so it should work for you under you know these default settings, but there's a few options here you might want to play with. Um, Pre-Bloom Boost let me go back over to Photoshop. This controls this thresholded image. Before the bloom is applied, you can add a boost to this that will boost these brighter colors up. So that gives you a little bit of control if you want some pre-bloom boost. Then this post-bloom boost here, let me go back over to Photoshop, this is the blurred image. You can also add a boost to this, so if you want to add a little bit um, more glow to the bloomed image, you can do that here. Just to give you a little bit more control. This bloom threshold, this controls how many, uh, how mon much of the dark colors are removed in this image here. Um, lower values are going to let more 
of the uh, bloom bleed into other areas, higher values are only going to keep the absolute brightest parts of the uh, image for bloom. So this 0.4 value is a, a good value to keep, but just some controls for you to play around with here. And one other thing I'll mention is that unlike some of my other shaders, this isn't good for previewing in dark shader. You want to do most of your previewing in FPS Creator, and here's why. You see I've got fraps running. Um, dark shader runs at like a thousand frames per second, so you're not going to really see the adaptation happening that much because dark shader just runs way too fast. Plus, you're not going to see the adaptation because in your games, you're going to want to have some contrast between the dark parts of your game and the bright parts, and you really need uh, uh, actual game level to see that. But there's some controls here for you to play with if, if, it, if you find you just want a little bit more bloom, a little bit less bloom uh, than what the defaults are providing. But um, other than that, everything else happens automatically. Last thing I'll mention is just a couple tips. Um, for using this in your games. Um, if you want to have a nice contrast between indoor and outdoor scenes, pick a, a cube map for your game that's nice and bright and sunny. That'll give you a nice contrast between, you know, that emerging from a tunnel into the daylight type of look that I uh, gave in my previous video. Another thing I'll mention is that you might um, need to adjust some of your lights in your game. Uh, the normal practice is in FPS Creator is you, you put a light source up against a, a wall, like a light entity, then you pray, place a light marker right next to it. Um, if you're adding bloom on top of that, you might notice it's getting blown out a little bit. That's because um, you really don't need to use those bright lights, you know, sources in addition to the bloom. So you want to go in and either scale down the radius of your lights a bit if you find things are getting bloomed out or even better right click on it and go into the light color and um, whatever color it happens to be if you move this slider down and you say you're using a pure white light try changing it to a gray and moving the slider down has the effect of removing brightness from the uh, lights in your game and because that's really what you want to do you want to around your light sources in your game let the bloom work its magic because that's going to give you a really nice realistic result so just some tips for you on how to use this thing and um, anyway I, I hope you find this shader useful it's uh, uh, it's I'm really proud of it it's it's a uh, pretty clever I think and and it and it really gives some nice effects, so uh, have fun.